It is now time for a question period. The Leader of Her Majesty's Royal Opposition. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. Premier, this uh, last Friday's uh, job numbers provide more proof that your failed economic policies are toxic for Ontario families. Statistics Canada told us that almost 34,000 Ontarians lost their jobs last month alone, bumping up the unemployment rate to 7.5 per cent. That's 34,000 more people who are struggling to feed their families in an Ontario that continues to fall further and further behind the rest of Canada. Your budget will be more of the same policies which landed us in this mess in the first place. It will continue to hurt Ontarians who are losing their livelihoods as a result. Premier, why do you refuse to accept the reality that your failed economic policies continue to hurt Ontario families? Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, there's no doubt that uh, after two strong months of uh, job growth, it's disappointing that uh, that this last month's uh, job numbers were not as good as we would have wanted, Mr. Speaker. And I think that's that's the case in other parts of the country as well. But, Mr. Speaker, that does not negate the fact that what we know right now is needed is investment and support for our economy, Mr. Speaker. We do not need what the uh, leader of the opposition and his party were proposing, which is to cut and slash and to actually slow to slow the economic yeah. recovery mr speaker we know that investments in infrastructure support for and partnership with business mr speaker are what we need to do and that is the that is the plan that we, uh, we have proposed to the people of ontario and that's the budget that we will be reintroducing today mr speaker again to the premier premier today's budget won't be a surprise to anyone including the rating agencies who have given dire warnings about the short and long-term impacts of this budget. A 1% increase in borrowing costs could add as much as $3 billion in annual interest payments. Yet the man in charge of the government's coffers assured the press gallery that the bankers aren't freaking. Premier, your finance minister won't be so laid back when the bankers call you, as they did Bob Ray, and I remember it very well, to tell you that Ontario's line of credit has been cut off and that they're not going to lend you any more money. Yes. Premier, do you appreciate that this is the reality you will face if you proceed with this budget? That one day Ontario's credit is going to get cut off or get awfully more expensive for Thank you. Thank you. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, the, the Leader of the Opposition continues in their pattern of talking down Ontario rather than building the province up, Mr. Speaker. We will be reintroducing the budget that uh, we brought to the people of Ontario, Mr. Speaker, and that budget, that plan, invests in the people of Ontario. It invests in the infrastructure of the province, Mr. Speaker, in communities across the province. It invests in the talent and the skills of the people of the province, Mr. Speaker, and we know that we have to be the best educated and best trained workforce in the world, Mr. Speaker. The, our plan makes sure that people will have retirement security, Mr. Speaker. So having a, an Ontario retirement pension plan in the absence of a federal partner, we are taking leadership. We are stepping up, Mr. Speaker, Answer. and we will put that retirement pension plan in place. The, uh, the Leader of the Opposition is correct. We are introducing the same plan that we ran on, Mr. Speaker. We are reintroducing the budget, which is exactly what we said we were going to do. The member from Prince Edward Hastings, come to order. Carry on, please. The, the Minister of Agriculture, come to order. Uh, back to the Premier. Premier, I remember very well when Wall Street bankers called Floyd Logren and Bob Ray and said, we're not going to lend you any more money. It led to the breaking of collective agreements right across the public sector and the chaos created by the social contract and Ray Days that many people remember. You're ignoring the financial experts. You're moving ahead with the same failed economic plan. 34,000 families on Friday can't possibly agree with your plan. The unemployment among youth is the highest it's been in my 24 years in this House. And yet, for 11 years, you just keep plowing ahead with the same <coughs> failed economic policies. Premier, you need to change course. You can't ignore the lenders because they're either going to cut you off someday or make money very, very expensive for the government to borrow. That will take billions of dollars Question. out of frontline services and hurt services that we count on, like health care and education. Why do you persist on this failed path? Thank you, Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, I would just note to the member opposite that in the two months prior to these job numbers, the job numbers were up in Ontario, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. In fact, more jobs have been created. So the fact is, the fact is that overall, 
Mr. Speaker, we have recovered more than 460,000 jobs since the economic downturn, Mr. Speaker. So, yes, I am disappointed that last month's job numbers were not what we would want them to be. But that's exactly why the plan that we're bringing forward and the strategy that we ran on, Mr. Speaker, and that we will reintroduce today in the form of our budget is the one that's needed to make sure that we invest in infrastructure, that we invest in the talent and skills of this province, Mr. Speaker. Finish, please. Yeah, partnerships and supports like the Southwestern Ontario Development Fund, yeah, Mr. Speaker, okay. like the Eastern Ontario Development Fund, the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund, Mr. Speaker, those supports that allow partnership with business, that allow yes, businesses to expand and allow jobs to be created. That's how we know this is the right plan for the people Thank of Ontario, you. Mr. Speaker. This person, a member from Nicholson. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Good morning, Speaker. Good morning, Premier. My question is for the Premier. Premier, Ontario lost 34,000 jobs last month, bumping our unemployment rate up to 7.5%. So let's talk about that. That is the 90th consecutive month that Ontario's unemployment Shame. was higher Shame. than the national average. That's seven and a half years, Premier. Not a very proud record. Yet your budget raises taxes and somehow still increases the deficit. Your budget also shows interest rate costs or interest costs growing by one billion dollars every year. Can you please tell us how higher taxes and higher interest payments are creating jobs in Ontario? Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure. Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. As the Premier said, while the job numbers in June weren't exactly what we would have liked, the fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, when you look at the overall trend, those numbers fluctuate month to month very, very, very significantly. 460,000 net new jobs created since the recession. We're up 172 jobs, Mr. Speaker, since the recession. And, you know, Ontario's recognized that our job plan was the way to go in the June election when they soundly rejected the PC approach. They rejected the PC plan to fire 100,000 workers and supported our plan to instead invest in education, invest in training, invest in infrastructure. They supported our plan, Mr. Speaker, to create jobs with partnerships through businesses, Mr. Speaker, that are creating over 50,000 jobs for our yes, regional economic development funds in our partnerships, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, and they rejected the PC approach to cancel those programs. Mr. Speaker, we're on the right Thank track, you. and this budget's going to ensure that we continue. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Premier, it's almost incomprehensible that you will not heed the warnings of the rating agencies. Moody's has warned you twice now, first on May 2nd and again last week. Then BlackRock has also sent a, a shot across your bow change your deficit financing strategy or be prepared to pay more. Portfolio management's Norman Levine told you to be ready for multiple downgrades simply because you show no plans to change your ways. Premier, when you use tax dollars to pay interest, that's money that you continue to take away from frontline services like health and education. You've already cut physiotherapy services for seniors. You've already cut cataract surgeries. You've already cut diabetes testing strips. So, Premier, what will you cut next to pay for the extra billion that you're spending on interest next year? Before I go to the minister, I'm going to ask that the whistling stop. Carry on. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the election's over. The people of Ontario have spoken. Enough of the negative rhetoric, enough of the tearing down of the efforts of Ontario businesses to build up our economy. The fact is, Ontario's economy is in full recovery. The fact is, Ontario has now created over 460,000 net new jobs, Mr. Speaker. The fact is, we're up 172 per cent from the recessionary low. Ontarians supported our plan, for instance, Mr. Speaker, to partner with the auto sector to support 500,000 jobs. And, Mr. Speaker, they rejected their plan to abandon the auto sector. They supported our plan to invest in our people, to invest in infrastructure, to invest in building a positive climate for investment in Ontario's economy. A plan, Mr. Speaker, that has made us number one in North America yes, for foreign direct investment. Mr. Speaker, it's time for the PCs to demonstrate that they learned something from the people of Ontario. It's time for the PCs Thank to you. support the budget. Thank you. Stop the clock, please. 
You see that, please? You see that, please? Final supplementary. Well, you, call it, uh, you call it negative re rhetoric. Moody's calls it a negative rating. <clears throat> Premier, we're at a real crossroads in Ontario. In the last 10 years, you've doubled our debt. You relied on borrowed money to pay our bills. You've tripled our hydro rates, so much so that companies have left Ontario for cheaper hydro. That sent 300,000 manufacturing jobs packing. These are undeniable facts. The budget does absolutely nothing to address the skyrocketing price of hydro. Companies are waiting, Premier. They're looking for leadership. Your announcement that hydro rates are going up by 42 per cent is not what they want to hear. We already have the highest hydro rates in North America. America. People want to see something different in this budget that will restore affordable Christian. hydro rates. Premier, will you deliver that to them? Thank you. Minister. My goodness, Mr. Speaker, the opposition are just so negative. They seem to get off on talking down Ontario's economy, Mr. Speaker. Well, there's still more work to do, and Mr. Speaker, we want to, in this budget, ensure that we continue to work with our business community. The fact is, as I said, we're up 460,000 net new jobs. The fact is, we're number one in North America for foreign direct investment. We're also number one, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to mine, the mine. We're the number one mining financial center in, in, in the world. Our auto sector, our information communication technology center, our financial services sector are among the top two in North America. We're in the top three in life sciences. Finish, please. Speaker, we're in the top three in so many different sectors, Mr. Speaker, in our economy in North America. Ontario's rejected your negative approach in the last election, so stop talking down on Ontario's Answer. economy. Show them that you learned something and support the budget that we're moving Thank forward you. with today. Thank you. New question, the leader of the third party. Uh, thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. 34,000 people lost their jobs in Ontario last month alone, and the Premier keeps uh, telling people that the budget is progressive, but it's a Trojan horse plan, and there's a big hole where there should be a jobs plan, Speaker. When the Premier reintroduces her budget, will it do anything to reverse failed Liberal policies of corporate handouts and instead put in place a real targeted plan to create jobs instead of killing jobs? Thank you, Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, um, this is the same question that has just been answered twice, coming now from uh, the NDP, Mr. Speaker, which is uh, somewhat surprising. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, what I will say to the uh, leader of the third party, as I said to the leader of the Conservatives, that um, you know we are we are obviously uh, not happy when, uh, out of three months, one month uh, the job numbers are down. But the fact is, Mr. Speaker, that we have recovered more than 460,000 net new jobs since the economic downturn. Now, that doesn't mean that that's even across the province. It doesn't mean that there aren't pockets of this province where there is obviously more work to do, Mr. Speaker, and we acknowledge that. We understand that, that there are certain parts of this province that were hit harder than others. And so that's why, Mr. Speaker, it's very important that we have Answer. targeted responses and we work with regions of the province to make sure that there are economic development plans in place that are suited to that region. But that kind of work involves building up those regions investing Thank in you. them and working with them, Mr. Speaker. Well, Speaker, I want to talk about another hole in the budget uh, plan for the for the for the province. The Premier insists that her budget uh, includes a plan for transit, but it has holes so big in it that you could drive an imaginary bullet train through them. There are holes where you would expect to find, for example, a downtown relief line, and holes where you would expect to find a plan for clean electric trains, or a real plan for two-way all-day go in this province. Now, is the Premier going to deal with these holes, Speaker? Or will Liberals have people waiting at the station yet again? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, well, it's again, uh, I just want to be clear with the uh, leader of the third party that 
What she is talking about, a plan for transit, is actually what is in our budget, Mr. Speaker. It is in our plan. We actually have a plan for the things that she is talking about, whether it is the downtown relief line, which is part of the, uh, the big move, Mr. Speaker, whether it's electrification of uh, the uh, goal lines, Mr. Speaker, so that we can have full-day two-way service. Those are actually part of our plan. They actually weren't part of the NDP's plan, but they are part of our plan, Mr. Speaker. That's the budget that we are reintroducing, Mr. Speaker, because we said we were going to do it. We are doing that today, and we want to move uh, once we, if we can get the budget passed in the legislature, we want to move to implement it, Mr. Speaker, because those, those things Answer. that the leader of the third party is talking about, those are part of our plan, and we want to make sure they get implemented, Mr. Speaker. Final supplementary. Speaker, families across Ontario are watching their bills go up, and as people turn on the air conditioning to deal with the rising temperatures, they're watching their bills go through the ceiling. For 10 years, bills have been going up, but instead of a plan that gets rates under control, there's another big hole in the budget. Are people who are paying the bills going to get a deja vu all over again and see their rates go up by 42 per percent by this government? Well, let me uh, let me just talk a little bit about what is in our plan, Mr. Speaker, because I don't know whether the uh, the leader of the third party quite understands that the budget that we are introducing today is the same budget that we introduced uh, at the beginning of May, Mr. Speaker. And and here's the thing: the member for uh, one of the members for Hamilton Stone Hamilton East Stony Creek Hamilton East Stony Creek says that uh, it was shot down. Well, Mr. Speaker, here's what the member for Hamilton East Stony Creek and his colleagues shot down. $4.2 billion in school retrofits and bills, a Made in Ontario pension plan, Mr. Speaker, increasing the Ontario Child Benefit, increasing social assistance benefits, $810 million to support adults with developmental disabilities, expansion of low-income health benefits, $20 million for expanding the student Answer. nutrition program, $42 million to prevent and reduce homelessness. Those are all in our budget, Mr. Speaker. The NDP is not supporting any of those, Mr. Speaker, unless by this afternoon, they have a change of heart and support our budget. You see it, please. You see it, please. Yes. The Minister of Agriculture will come to order. Second time. New question. Speaker, my next question is for the Premier, and although she loves to rail off her little list, this Trojan horse budget is filled with all kinds of other surprises that she doesn't like to talk about much, Speaker. Like the fact that the Liberals are planning to have a fire sale of public assets, uh, things like the LCBO and our hydro companies, even while they bail out American real estate companies. It's astonishing that the Liberals are planning to sell the LCBO when even Mike Harris said it was too valuable to sell. Speaker. Now, does the Premier really think it's a good idea to burn the furniture to heat the house? Well, Mr. Speaker, again, she, uh, the leader of the third party is making it up, as she did during the election campaign, Mr. Speaker. She's making it up. The fact is, there have been investments in assets in this province for decades, Mr. Speaker, and investments in assets need to work. Assets need to work for the people of the province. Yep. So what we have done is we have asked Ed Clark, who is CEO of the uh, Toronto Dominion Bank, we've asked him to work with the team and to make sure that the assets that are owned by the people of Ontario are working to the maximum benefit for the people of Ontario, Mr. Speaker, because we want to be able to make sure that we have those dollars to reinvest, Mr. Speaker, yeah. to invest in the infrastructure and the assets that we know we need for the future. Now, if the leader of the third party doesn't think that's yes, a sir. good idea, then I think she should be clear, because I think investment in the assets that we need today is a responsible Thank thing you. to do for the people of the province, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. Speaker, the Liberals claim that auto insurance bills are coming down, but uh, by talking about approved rates, uh, they're not to talking about the rates that uh, drivers are actually paying. But drivers get a surprise every time that they open the bill for their auto insurance companies because they're not seeing any savings at all. Drivers know the real story, whether the Liberals coat it with shiny red paint or not. 
When the Premier introduces her budget this afternoon, will drivers see real savings, or will be more of the same Liberal spin without any real relief for the people who are paying the bills? So, Mr. Speaker, you know, what I hear the Leader of the Third Party doing is going through a list of somewhat connected but, but disjointed questions, Mr. Speaker. Again, the kind of platform she had that things aren't necessarily connected, looking for a rationalization not to support the budget, Mr. Speaker, because there is so much in this budget that is good for the people of the province, and the Leader of the Third Party talked about a little list. It's actually a long list of things that are in the best interest of the people of the province, Mr. Speaker. On the issue of auto insurance, the Leader of the Third Party knows full well that on average auto insurance rates are down 4.6 per cent. We are on track to make sure that those auto insurance rates come down by 15 per cent. She knows that, Mr. Speaker, but she's throwing up the, this rhetoric in order to justify not supporting the budget, not supporting wage increases for personal yes, support workers, not supporting new funding for long-term care homes, not supporting expanded mental health and addiction strategy, Mr. Speaker, and not supporting a comprehensive action plan for action. Thank you. Final supplementary. Well, Speaker, new Democrats know exactly where we stand, and we know that this Liberal plan is full of holes and it is full of surprises. It's a plan to sell off public assets, but it bails up. Stop the clock. It's a plan to sell off public assets, but it bails out American real estate speculators. It makes life more expensive for people, but hands more no-strings-attached giveaways to corporations. And the jobs plan? It's the same jobs plan, Speaker, that led to Ontarians losing 34,000 jobs last month and has, had, has led to employment in manufacturing hitting its lowest point in this province since 1976. Not not good work from the Liberal Speaker. Now, does the Premier agree that her budget plan Question. is a Trojan horse plan for Ontario? Well, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> believe it or not, a lot has changed in Ontario since 1976. Yes. And uh, so it's very important that the government in 2014 have a plan that's relevant to 2014, not to 1976, Mr. Speaker. And that it's necessary to invest in advanced manufacturing. It's necessary to partner with businesses so that they can expand and they can keep up globally, Mr. Speaker. Ontario has recovered more than 460,000 net new jobs, Mr. Speaker. We have a plan that will continue to invest in the, the businesses in this province, support the businesses in this province, support the people in this province who need training that is going to allow them to be globally competitive, Mr. Speaker. Make sure that we have an international trade strategy that finds new markets, Mr. Speaker. It's 2014. We're introducing a budget that's good for Ontario in 2014. Mr. Speaker. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. New question, the member from Nippy and Carleton. So, Speaker, my question is as well uh, to the Premier of Ontario. On Friday, we learned that Ontario lost 34,000 jobs. That's equivalent to the town of St. Thomas, just for your information. The government's strategy of job reduction, of high taxes, high hydro bills, and the high cost of government is compromising the livelihood of tens of thousands of Ontarians. And today, when the Liberals retable their May budget, Ontario is expected to see a credit downgrade. That will cause further job losses in the province of Ontario. Two specific policies come to mind. The Ontario Pension Plan and the AV fuel tax could cost Ontario massive job losses, according to the CFIB and Air Canada. Does the Premier really think that losing not just thousands of jobs, but tens of thousands of jobs Question. is progressive? Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure. I have to finish. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
you know, let's talk about tens of thousands of jobs. Let's talk about the 50,000 jobs that have been created in this province from the partnerships that we've engaged in our regional economic development funds and our partnerships. Mr. Speaker, an approach supported by the people of Ontario on the last rejection. The last election, and your the approach to cancel those North programs North. was rejected. Let's talk about the 500,000 jobs, direct and indirect, in our auto sector, Mr. Speaker. We're going to continue to partner with our auto sector. Our Jobs and Prosperity Fund, which is part of this budget, Mr. Speaker, will, will spend $2.5 billion over 10 years to continue those partnerships. You oppose those funds, and the people of Ontario rejected Answer. your approach and supported ours. Mr. Speaker, we're going to continue to keep investing in this province. We're going to continue to keep partnering with Thank our you. business community. We're going to continue to keep. Thank you. Supplementary. That rhetoric was all well and good for an election campaign speaker, but John Maynard Keynes once says, as the facts change, I change my mind. Well, the facts did change with a credit downgrade on the outlook for this province as a result of this budget. The government needs to understand fewer jobs mean there are fewer people paying taxes for our schools, our hospitals and our infrastructure. That means the Liberals will have to either raise taxes, cut services or do both, all while giving our sovereignty over to credit rating agencies in New York and elsewhere in the world. The government needs to be honest with Ontarians right now. This is not the activist centre. This is an activist failure, Speaker. On, on top of the 34,000 jobs that we lost last month, will the Premier admit she is on track to losing Question. tens of thousands of more jobs as a result of this 2014 budget? Thank you. Minister. Mr. Speaker, as we said, last month was not the best month for job creation in the province of Ontario. But if you look at the overall picture and the trends, we're up 460,000 net new jobs for, since the recession. That's the fact, Mr. Speaker. We're headed in the right direction. But I want to ask the member to think about this. How would it have looked last month, Mr. Speaker, if our numbers came in 100,000 less because of your plan to cut and fire 100,000 people in this province? Mr. Speaker, the people of Ontario chose well in the last election. They chose a, an economic plan that's having results, Mr. Speaker, that's going to continue to build a strong economy. They rejected your plan to lay off 100,000 people, Mr. Speaker. It's time for you to learn something from that. It's time for you to support our budget, to invest in infrastructure to invest in partnerships, to keep building, Mr. Speaker, on yes, the sir. economic success that we've had to date. Thank you. The question, the member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question was for the Minister of Finance, but I'll direct it to the Premier. Last week at the Empire Club, in a discussion about Ontario's finances, to a group of assembled civil servants, uh, your Minister of Finance said, come on, guys, take those happy pills. In other words, he doesn't think that Ontario's economy is that bad, but the reality is that bad. Uh, Ontario's unemployment rate is now up to 7.5 per cent. It's much higher for those who are uh, youth in the province of Ontario. Good-paying manufacturing jobs uh, are at their lowest point since 1976. And according to the latest jobs numbers, we are down 34,000 jobs. Would the minister or the premier uh, ask those recently laid off people in this province, the good people of this province, to just take some of those Question. happy pills? Thank you. Premier. Mr. Speaker, I know that the uh, Minister of Economic Development will want to uh, will want to speak to the supplementary, but I, I just want to say that you know the the fact is that uh, we, along with other jurisdictions, are still recovering. There is no doubt that the economic downturn hit Ontario very hard. We have a diversified economy, but the manufacturing sector in this economy uh, was hit very hard by the economic Thank downturn, you, and we're going through a transition, Mr. Speaker. As I said to the leader of the third. Party. Uh, you know, it's not 1976 when, uh, when there was a different kind of traditional manufacturing no in this province. Manufacturing is developing and advanced manufacturing is necessary. It's necessary for those investments to be made in order for companies to be able to compete globally. That's why what we're proposing in our budget is so Answer. important, Mr. Speaker, that we make those investments, that we partner with business, and that we have an economic strategy that works for all regions of the province. I hope Thank that you. the member opposite will find her way clear. To Thank you. Supplementary. So, to the Premier, we are not recovering because you keep doing the same thing over and over again, and then we get the same results. Ontario has been above the national unemployment rate since 2007. 
debts under Liberal governments that include much of the current cabinet that are on that side of the House. The loss of tens of thousands of good-paying jobs in the province of Ontario is not a time to make flippant remarks. Your government's plan to create jobs in Ontario isn't working, and it hasn't been working for a long, long time. Will the Premier tell the people of Ontario in concrete terms why they should believe anything will be different under this government when there apparently hasn't been a plan since 2007? And will someone on that side of the House please apologize to the people of this province for saying that they should just take some happy pills when they can't get a job in the province of Ontario? Minister of Economic Development. Mr. Speaker, I would say to the member opposite, show little faith in the judgment of the people of Ontario, Mr. Speaker. The people of Ontario, Mr. Speaker, chose in June to support an economic plan that's created 460,000 net new jobs since the recession. They rejected your plan to put in place a silly little job creation uh, tax credit, Mr. Speaker, that would have given businesses money for creating jobs they would have created in the first place. They also rejected your plan to jack up corporate tax rates, Mr. Speaker. That would not have hurt our, helped our economy. It would have hurt our economy. And they supported our plan to continue to partner with businesses, something you called corporate welfare. Show a little faith in the people of Ontario. Show that you've learned from some of the things that they told you in this election. Support the budget that we're providing Answer. today to keep building a strong economy, create jobs, and invest in infrastructure. Thank you. New question. The member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Training Colleges and Universities. Speaker, each summer, as students finish classes and final exams at post secondary institutions across the province, they struggle to find summer employment. My 20 year old son has many friends that have just finished first or second year college or university. Employment during the summer months is important to these youth, not just to save money for the school year, but also to gain valuable work experience that will help them to find that job or career after they graduate. It's our responsibility as a government to ensure that our young people have meaningful opportunities for success. Question. Now that we're a few months into the summer, Minister, can the minister tell us what the government has done to ensure access to jobs for our young people this summer? Thank you, Minister of Training College. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the member from Cambridge, and also I want to congratulate her, Mr. Speaker, on her election. I'm pretty sure that she will make an excellent MPP for her right yeah. and also a powerful vote for her constituents. Mr. Speaker. Through my ministry of summer job services, the students have been able to search for jobs through the, my ministry's employment network. Also, they can get help with their resumes, and also they can apply for funding to start up their own summer company. We are also offering, Mr. Speaker, a $2 per hour hiring incentives to employers to hire students during summertime. Our government this year has invested $29 million to connect the students with job opportunities across the province. And Mr. Speaker, and this summer, our the program will help 30,000 students to find jobs. Mr. Speaker, helping Answer. our young people and the students to succeed is the prime importance for our government. Sorry. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for informing the members of the House about what our government is doing to help young people find meaningful jobs this summer. I'm glad our government has committed to providing great opportunities such as these. My 20-year-old son is currently employed by just such a program. Summer is a great time for our youth to experience something outside of our comfort zone, whether this is by doing jobs that allow them to work outdoors or bringing them out of the urban areas and into Ontarians' northern and rural communities. Summer is about new experiences. For example, my son trained to become a fire ranger. He got a job this summer with Ministry of Natural Resources near Timmins. Last week, he went to fight a forest fire by helicopter. He has new learned new skills that were definitely not in his comfort zone a few months ago. Speaker, can Question. the minister share with the members of this House how our government helps to provide youth with jobs in Ontario's outdoors? Thank you, Minister, minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. 
The Speaker, I want to thank the member for the question and let me offer my congratulations as well to the member on her election. I've got a number of former Thunder Bay folks who are living in that riding that are thrilled by your election, and I offer my congratulations to you as well. Speaker, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry has a long history of offering young people their first jobs in parks, in science and research, and in offices across the province. In fact, MNR is the largest employer of youth in the Ontario Public Service, and in this, uh, this particular summer, we'll be offering over 1,900 uh, jobs to youth being employed in the MNR right across the province, and these jobs will be in a wide variety of different sectors. For example, they might work on a project to create habitat for species at risk, help monitor for the health of the forests, or assist with community environmental events. And those in the Stewardship Youth Ranger program will work on natural resource management yes, projects sir. in their own communities. Speaker, I'm thrilled with the role that the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestries uh, continue to play in offering summer employment opportunities for youth right across Thank the you. province of Ontario. New question, the member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Premier, last week you stated that you are, and I quote, extremely interested in the work of the Select Committee. In fact, this is an issue that a number of us on all sides of the House have been concerned about for some time. However, when I asked for unanimous consent for the committee to be restructured so it could table its report, you and your government turned it down. Shame. With a promise of $810 million for developmental services that's going to be tabled in this afternoon's budget, the recommendations of the report could go a long way to making sure that you get good value for money. Instead, you are choosing to throw money at a broken system. Yes. Premier, will you commit to restriking the select committee so that it can file its final report and deliver the supports and services that individuals and families across Ontario so desperately need in Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I know that the government House Leader will want to speak to the specifics of, uh, of this issue, but the, uh, the member opposite knows full well that the release of the report and the, uh, the findings of the committee, that that whole discussion is part of the House Leader's discussion, Mr. Speaker, because there is a negotiation going on right now about how the business of the, uh, the House will be done over the, uh, the next couple of weeks, Mr. Speaker. And the member opposite knows that. She also Negotiate. I'm going to negotiate some quiet. Please finish. She also knows that the $810 million that we have in our budget for people with developmental disabilities, she knows that that is necessary money. She knows that there are wait lists and there are programs that people cannot get access to because there isn't enough money in the system. I understand that there need to be changes, Mr. Speaker, but I also understand that there needs to be investment, and that $810 million is needed in the system, Mr. Speaker, so we need that budget to pass. Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, I'm anticipating what the House Leader is about to say, and he's going to say it's all caught up with the work of the, the House and what's going on. There's a very big difference, Mr. Speaker, between the work of the Standing Committees and the work of the Select Committee. That is a truly nonpartisan thing, and I think it's really shameful that you're hiding behind that in order to block what's going on with this Select Committee. $810 million is a lot of money, Premier. We need to make sure that it's being spent properly. But yet, you don't even want to hear the reports of the Select Committee. Why? I don't understand why, and people, thousands what of individuals hiding? and families across Ontario don't understand either. It's a simple thing to do. Why won't you just say yes, allow the Select Committee to do its work, to reconstitute the committee, so it can file its report and then listen to its recommendations? People are counting on you to do the right thing. Thank you. Premier. Government House Leader. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Speaker, and uh, I, I thank the member from Whitby Oshawa for her for important uh, uh, question and I appreciate uh, her work that she has done, along with other uh, members of the of the committee from all three parties on this very important issue. As the Premier said in the budget today, we are going to be committing about $810 million for our They're developmental uh, disability sector, and an, an initiative, which, an initiative which I hope the opposition parties very much will support. And that's why, Speaker, the conversations that the House leaders are having right now in terms of constituting committees is very important, because that involves also the standing committee, so that the work that she refers to gets, uh, gets done. And as to the member of Whitby Oshawa, you know, if her House leader agrees to the kind of conversation we are having, 
this afternoon we can have that committee uh, established but we all have to work on uh, reconstituting committees as a, as a yes, whole sir. speaker as has always been the tradition in the house and we're working hard towards achieving that goal thank you very much Any questions? Um, the member from Windsor West thank you speaker my question is to the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. The people of Windsor have been clear. We need a new hospital to serve our families. Today, planning is underway to select a site, draw up master plans, and determine future uses for existing facilities. But our community is worried about the government's commitment to deliver a new, Winds a new Windsor hospital on time. Speaker, will the minister commit to delivering funding for the new Windsor hospital, or is he planning to delay a project that our community desperately needs? Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate the question. It gives me the opportunity to uh, indicate uh, what we have done in terms of the planning process already uh, underway for the, uh, the potential uh, future needs of the Windsor area. We've invested, Mr. Speaker, $2.5 million towards the preliminary planning process to develop, which are important aspects of this process, to de develop the scope and governance for a proposed new acute care hospital in Windsor. And I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that Windsor Regional Hospital, as well as Hotel Dieu, Grace Healthcare, and community partners are all currently working together yep. with the Erie St. Clair Lynn and developing that stage, that important stage one proposal, Mr. Speaker. So, planning our healthcare future is a collaborative process. We're very eager to hear that important feedback Answer. from the Windsor community. <laughs> Speaker, health care austerity continues under this government's Trojan horse budget. Three straight years of frozen budgets mean hospitals are sending more services to private clinics and charging patients more for parking and other user fees. The people of Windsor need a firm commitment from this government that a new hospital will be fully supported by the provincial government and delivered without any delay. Speaker, will the minister tell us how much funding this government will provide to deliver the Windsor, Windsor Hospital on time? Thank you, so thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I think the member opposite would agree that we shouldn't make decisions without having that important community input. And that's precisely what this planning proposal is set up to do. And I would offer the member the opposite if she's interested in actually learning more of the details. I would offer to have my ministry provide her with a full briefing so that she's up to speed on precisely what our plan is and the, the action. So I hope you take me up on that offer uh, for a briefing from the ministry. But in terms of her comment about austerity, the truth is absolutely the opposite. And particularly for Windsor, 93 more doctors as of 2012 since compared to 2003. The uh, Erie St. Clair Lynn now has 588 more nurses wow. than they had in 2005. And of course, as she knows well, the Chatham Kent Health Link, I would hope, she knows well, the Health Link is providing this amazing Answer. coordinated care to the area's most complex patients. Just a few examples how we're investing in Windsor Health Thank you. The uh, member from Barrie. Mr. Speaker, my question today is for the Minister of Children and Youth Services. Minister, we know that life can be challenging for children with communication, developmental and physical disabilities. It can also be very difficult for the families involved. In my riding in Barrie, I have met with and heard from families that are facing these challenges. I am always impressed by their constant strength and unrelenting commitment to support and advocate for their children. I have heard from many Barrie families, including those of the children attending the ASD class in my school, about the difficulties they face getting special needs services for their children. My question, Mr. Speaker, can the minister please inform this House about what our government is doing to address the concerns question. and challenges that these families face when trying to access special needs services? Thank you. Thank you. Minister of Services. Thank you, Speaker. First, I want to congratulate our new member from Barrie on her successful election to the legislature. And I'd also like to thank the Premier for, ask, for asking me to take on this very important role. Thank you, Premier. Uh, speaker, as you know, when I was the parliamentary assistant for the Minister of Children and Youth Services, I undertook an engagement to explore ways to improve 
uh, programs and services for children with special needs. I met with families, researchers, service providers, and cities all across Ontario to discuss how our government can improve access and uh, support for services we offer uh, families and children with special needs. I heard from families that navigating the system is indeed difficult, stressful, and tiring. I heard that rehabilitation Answer. services are often inconsistent. These findings form the basis of my report, which, along with advice from leading experts, went on to form our new strategy. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank the minister for her answer, and I commend her for all of her efforts when it comes to reaching out to families and experts to improve the services our government offers. I know that experience will serve her well in her new role as the Minister of Children and Youth Services. Ministers, the concern you heard during those engagement sessions are similar to the concerns I've heard in my riding in Barrie. You mentioned that your report formed the basis for our government's new special needs strategy. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the minister is, could she please inform this House of the details of the new strategy and how it improves services for children and their families? Thank you, Minister. Thank you. Speaker, indeed, I did hear from families that navigating uh, the system can be a very challenging process. That's why we, we will be hiring service coordinators to make planning for child care easier uh, and easier for their families. I also heard from experts that early intervention is so important. That's why, as part of our strategy, we will introduce a new preschool development screen that will connect children and families to the services they need sooner. I also heard that access to rehabilitation services is very inconsistent as children move through the system. That's why we're integrating the delivery of these services by making access seamless from birth through to the school years. By implementing this strategy, Speaker, our government is ensuring that children and youth throughout Ontario can reach their full potential. Answer. Thank you. Thank you. New question, a member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Thanks. Uh, my question is to the Premier. Premier, earlier this year you said you were going to take middle class tax hikes off the table. But then, just weeks later, you turned around and slipped an excessive new tax hike into your budget, which will be imposed on all passenger and cargo flights. Yeah. Once this tax is in effect, the cost of goods will rise and Ontario flights will become the most expensive in Canada. So, Premier, do you still think your aviation fuel tax won't affect the middle class, or are you just hoping Ontarians miss what you're really well, up to? They're happy in Buffalo and Syria. Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure. Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And yes, this is part of the budget that we'll be tabling uh, later today. And, Mr. Speaker, the fact of the matter is we're going to build public transit in this province. We're going to invest uh, $29 billion, Mr. Speaker, over the next number of years to do that. And it does require some revenue tools, Mr. Speaker. At least we've laid out where the revenues are going to come. Come from, and it's very clearly in the budget. And yes, it is challenging, and it will be challenging for the sector. But, Mr. Speaker, we need those revenues to invest in building public transit. Unlike your approach, Mr. Speaker, was to find those revenues by laying off 100,000 public servants, Mr. Speaker. That's where your savings were going to come from. We are. We do have revenue tools. They're part of the budget, Mr. Speaker. It's never easy, and I don't expect any sectors that are impacted by those revenue Answer. tools to be pleased with that. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, it's in the interest of ensuring that we build tra public transit in this province, that we need Thank to make you. these challenging decisions. Supplementary. Yes, uh, so back to the Premier again. Uh, Premier, in your desperate race to raise more revenue, you've put forward another punitive tax hike race to the bottom. without any consideration of its economic consequences. In fact, the airline industry says when it asked you for an economic impact assessment on your aviation fuel tax, See you couldn't ya. provide one. Premier, we all know it's the policy of your government to tax first and ask questions later, yeah. but you still have time to chart a new course. So, Premier, Quit right the will you do the happens. right thing and remove this tax hike from your budget, Shameful. or will you recklessly move forward with no regard for middle-class Ontarians and our economy? Thank you, Minister. 
Mr. Speaker, our budget was clear and our platform was clear. And Mr. Speaker, we're going to build public transit in this province, and it's not easy. But we've laid out a path to get us there. Unlike the member opposite in his party, and unlike the other opposition party, Mr. Speaker, it's not easy. And we're going to have to work together as a province, and we're going to have to work with our business community. And in this case, Mr. Speaker, the aviation sector, Mr. Speaker, we will work with the airlines to ensure they can adjust to these challenges. But Mr. Speaker, this tax hasn't been touched since 1992. They're paying less over as a percentage uh, than other fuel, Mr. Speaker, in our economy. And the fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, in, in order to ensure the competitiveness of our economy and our quality of life, we need to invest $29 billion, Mr. Speaker, in public transit and transportation in this province. We're going to get that job done. It's not going to be easy, but we've laid out a path to get there, Mr. Speaker. And I commend you, commend the budget that we're just about to bring forward and ask you. for your support. Uh, it, Thank you. New question. The member from Niagara Falls. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Transportation. Since I first arrived at Queen's Park, I've been working with all parties to get year-round GO train service to Niagara Falls. The 12 mayors, regional chairs, businesses, and residents of my riding have been clear. It's time for the government to deliver daily GO train service to Niagara Falls. In fact, during the campaign, the chair of the cabinet promised to get the job done. He admitted the Welland Canal was not a problem after all, and he committed the government to deliver GO train service in 2015. Speaker, after all the delays, will the Minister of Transportation commit today to ensuring year-round GO train service all the way to Niagara Falls? If not, why not? Question. For thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I want to I want to thank the member from Niagara Falls for that question. I know it's an important question for the community that he represents, and also for the people of Niagara Region, Speaker. But what I want to particularly do this morning is pay tribute to the member from St. Catharines, who is an individual who has long been a champion for making sure that we can continue to invest in his region. And that member from St. Catharines understands, Speaker, as we do on this side of the house, why it is so crucial that we passed the budget that we put before the people of Ontario that includes $29 billion for investments in crucial infrastructure, including transportation, including transit. And I sincerely hope that the member from Niagara Falls who has put forward the question this morning will encourage his colleagues to work with us to pass the budget so that we can keep moving Ontario forward. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, the Liberals were very clear during the campaign. They said they would expand GO service outside the GTA. They said they would deliver GO service that the people and business of Niagara Falls need. And the chair of the cabinet couldn't have been more direct when he promised year-round GO train service to Grinsby, St. Catharines, and Niagara Falls in 2015. He said, I'm committed to it, and the government is committed to it in 2015. Speaker. Will the minister confirm that year-round GO train service will de be delivered all the way to Niagara Falls? Thank you. Minister of Transportation. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I, and I thank the member opposite from, for his supplementary. But, but again, I say to that member and I say to his leader and the rest of the folks on that side of the House, that is why it is so important for them to listen to what took place during the course of the recent election campaign, Speaker, to heed the voices of the people of Ontario, work with us on this side, pass the budget, so that over the next 10 years, we can invest $29 billion in all kinds of fantastic projects for Niagara Region and for the rest of the province, whether it's the GTHA or beyond. And I said in my initial answer, Speaker, that the member from St. Catharines has long been a champion for additional investments in his community. And because of that member, the member from St. Catharines' local leadership speaker, he has been able to deliver positive results for his community, including Go Train Summer Answer. Service and Go Buses to Burlington. And I want to thank the member from St. Catharines for his advocacy and for his being Here. a strong champion for the people of Niagara Region. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First of all, I would like to congratulate you for your election. My question for the Minister of Energy. Part of our energy platform for the province, conservation, of course, is an important component. I, have, I continue to receive a number of inquiries from my own residents in the great riding of Etobicoke North about energy conservation. 
But, Speaker, my residents are not merely interested in doing their part to save the planet, but more particularly how energy conservation initiatives can affect their own personal consumer energy bills. They want to know, Speaker, in a word, how they can save money. Now, in my fourth term here in Parliament, Speaker, I have seen our government's energy strategy evolve and how we have worked to publicize, strengthen, foster and reward a culture of conservation. Speaker, my question is this. Will the minister please inform this chamber about the specific actions and the latest thinking that our government is taking question. to promote energy conservation for the province? Thank you. <coughs> minister of energy. Speaker, I thank the member from Etobicoke North for his interest in this matter. Mr. Speaker, conservation is one of the cleanest and most cost-effective energy resources. It offers consumers a way to reduce their bills and reduces the need to build new generation, transmission and distribution infrastructure. And that is why our government made conservation first a key element of our long-term energy plan, so we can build on the work that has been done to foster a culture of conservation in Ontario. As we plan for Ontario's electricity needs, we will invest in all cost-effective conservation before new generation. And to ensure we aggressively pursue all conservation options, we set a 2032 conservation target of 30 terawatt hours, enough to power a city the size of Toronto. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker, and I appreciate, Minister, the strides that Ontario has made in energy conservation under our government. And, Speaker, while I do appreciate the encouragement I receive constantly from the member from Hamilton East Stony Creek and his consistent heckling, I would invite him at least to sit in his own seat while he does so. Speaker, I understand that according to the energy. Speaker, I understand that according to the Energy Efficiency Alliance, we have already improved Ontario's conservation rating from C- to an A- over the past seven years. Speaker, that's a rating that's going in the right direction. Yet, Speaker, there is always more work to be done, particularly on such an important file as energy. We must continue to give electricity consumers in Ontario more tools to help them conserve energy in their homes and businesses. Speaker, could the minister please tell the House Question. what programs are available to homeowners and small businesses to help them conserve energy and save money? Next, Thank you. Mr. Speaker, Minister. saving energy. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, saving energy means saving money. For every dollar invested in energy efficiency, Ontario has avoided about two dollars in system costs. The same is true for consumers. Energy you don't use is energy you don't pay for. Through government programs, consumers now have access to information and funding to choose the most energy efficient appliances and products for their homes and for their businesses. <laughs> we will also introduce new financing tools, including on bill financing for energy efficiency retrofits starting in 2015, Mr. Speaker. And the Peak Saver Plus program Answer. has helped some consumers reduce their consumption up to 9%. That's a good idea. You won't hear from the other parties talking about conservation. Thank I think you. That the, 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 the opposition, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. New question, the member from Simcoe North. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Training, College and Universities. Minister, I want to congratulate you on your appointment to this position. Um, as you know, and I hope you've been briefed on this, Bernie Fishbean, the, elect the Electrician Union's longtime lawyer, chaired a number of ratio review panels for the Ontario College of Trades, including the review for the electrician trade. It is alleged in an application for judici judicial review that Mr. Fishbean was in a conflict of interest when he chaired the electrician's review panel as he failed to disclose his long-standing professional relationship as a lawyer with the ele Electricians' Union. The Electricians' Union was one of the participants in the ratio review, and Mr. Fishbean recommended their proposal for the ratio review of the electrician's trade. Mr. Speaker, a conflict of interest is very unacceptable to Ontarians, particularly when it comes to decisions affecting their careers and businesses. So I'll ask the minister to direct. Will the minister direct the College of Trades to ignore Mr. Fishbean's recommendations and order a complete new review for this trade? Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the member opposite for that question. Mr. Speaker, investing in people of Ontario is prime importance for the uh, for the um, for this government. That's why we have created the Ontario College of Trade. For the first time in the history of this province, the tradespeople they have the same right as doctors, dentists, teachers, nurses Excellent. to make decisions. 
it's not for the politicians, it's not for the bureaucrats to make decisions for them. That's why we have created the Ontario College of Trade, Mr. Speaker. In the past, just over a year since the college started its operation, they have made a great progress, Mr. Speaker. They have reviewed 33 uh, professions, and after that, they have reduced ratios, which the member opposite has always asked questions in this uh, chamber about reducing the ratios. They have reduced the ratios for, uh, for, uh, for I believe, 14 uh, professions, sir. and also they have introduced one more uh, profession into the compulsory uh, category. So they have been doing Thank great you. job, Mr. Speaker, within the short time uh, they you. start operation. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Minister. And I think the first thing you got better get you better get briefed on this uh, on this college of trades. Uh, your government and your biased appointment of the electricians' union lawyer has raised apprenticeship ratios for electricians from three to one to a convoluted six to one. No. Six to one no. ratio review. No. So, Minister. Your new six to one ratios for electricians is a barrier to entering the electrician's trade, and it affects small businesses. Do you not understand that? So, why won't you reject the biased advice of the electrician's union's lawyer and your biased process and lower apprenticeships, apprenticeship ratios for electricians to what we want? A one to one ratio. That's what we want. Also wanted to fire hundreds of thousands of people. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the ratios are basically the number of uh, uh, journey person, the teacher to the students. And this is the decision that the college should be making, not me, not politicians, not bureaucrats. That's why we have created Ontario College of Trade, and that's what they are doing. In the past, oh, just over a year since their operation, Mr. Speaker, they have reviewed 33 professions and they have reduced actually the ratios for 14 professions. They have been doing a great job, Mr. Speaker, and we are going to review, appoint the advisor to the Ontario College of Trade in the near future so that the college operation could be reviewed in general. So that is our position, Mr. Speaker, and I'm sure the member opposite, who comes from the trade background himself, he knows this very well, that it's very important that the trade people, they have to, they have to decide on their own Sir. the number of, uh, the, the ratio of uh, teachers to the, to the students at this Thank profession. You. Question, member from London West. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities. According to the Ontario Undergraduate Student Alliance, our province is failing an alarming number of post-secondary students. Fully two-thirds of students are worried that they won't have enough money to complete their degree. At approximately $8,000, Ontario has the highest undergraduate tuition fees in Canada, and concerns about taking on huge debt loads are causing some students, particularly those from underrepresented groups, to think twice about university education. Speaker, how can the minister defend a budget that does nothing to improve access to post-secondary education, does nothing to reduce barriers, and make sure we are leveraging the talents and skills of all of our young people? Question. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the member opposite for that question. Mr. Speaker, since we came to the office in 2003, we have invested heavily in secondary and post-secondary education. Actually, our higher education plan with $6.2 billion investment has been and is the, the biggest and the largest investment in post-secondary wow. education in the past 40 years in the history of this province. As a result of this heavy investments in our post-secondary education, we have created 170,000 more spaces for our students wow. so that our young people can get higher education in our universities and the colleges. Mr. Speaker, we have reduced tuition fees by 30 percent, which the member opposite and his par her party actually voted against that. 30 percent reduction. This saves $530 million to our students in order to be able to continue their education. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. They didn't have an education class. There are no deferred votes. This House stands recessed until 1 p.m. this afternoon.